uh, with plenty of time during this lockdown to ponder over and think about the options that you have to build up your career profile we are here to add a little context to your thoughts with our patshala series good afternoon everyone we hope all are doing well and staying safe we welcome you all to today's episode of patshala series today we will focus on department of physics and for that we have two of the most remarkable alumni from our department we have aditya das a Marie Curie PhD early stage researcher at Heidelberg University with PhD admits from upper echelon universities all around the world. He has also been the Chancellor Fellow awardee from Warwick University, UK. He has research publications and presentations in many prestigious journals all around. Basically, he's the go-to guy for research-oriented students. We also have with us Abel Matthews, an analyst at Goldman Sachs, DSC lead, president of the TEDx and ITR, a formal technical coordinator at Monday Morning, uh, an ICS mentor and a tutor, and also a member of a training community. You know, uh, you name it, Abel has done it, uh, is the go-to quote for him. Uh, with such amazing speakers on board, we hope that you will all tune in till the last of the session. While they speak about their experiences and give, give us suggestions, feel free to drop questions and queries in chat box. The speakers will answer all your questions relevant to the topic of discussion. Now, I would like to hand over the mic to our guests and carry this event forward. Aditya Bhaiya, can you please uh, start with yeah. our discussion? So, good afternoon, everyone. So, thank you, Sanindya, for such a wonderful uh, explanation about me. So, so, basically, I will help you to provide an overall idea about how to approach uh, research domains So, from my previous experiences till now. So, I will share a PPT. So can you just, okay. So, so is it uh, visible to you? Shaninde, can you just tell? Uh, no, but it's, uh, as of yet, it's not visible. Okay, so is it visible to you now? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So basically, uh, in, uh, what we think about is where do physicists walk? So that's an initial question that uh, everyone have when someone joins uh, for a bachelor or master's degree. So what are the things that a physicist can do or all these sort of things because they have to think about their career perspective and uh, all this sort of things. So there are basically three things that you need to, uh, uh, three things where you can apply or do work. So the first one is the industries. So you have various options in industries like uh, uh, BARC, DRDO and all this sort of things. And also outside outside India, it will you will you will have a lot of opportunities in industries just like semiconductor industries or various type of uh, industries which are recruiting the uh, physics graduates and the uh, physics uh, research oriented for peoples so it will be easier and uh, also in family lab innovation lab in uh, europe and in uh, usa so these are the options that you can have after completing your graduate or, or masters from physics and also so these things just like uh, what i'm doing is uh, uh, i am also a phd at a uh, 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 at the uh, uh, European University. So what we are trying to do is we are also collaborating with uh, some industries also, that is uh, Innovation Lab, and also simultaneously uh, working in a university. So it will give you a better opportunity to uh, move on after you're completing your PhD to our uh, industry-oriented thing, or you can go to some uh, sort of different labs if you have a collaboration type of thing during your PhD. So the next opportunity that you can have is uh, government laboratories. So there are plenty of options in government laboratories like in India. There are uh, various physics laboratories where you can join after completing your graduates, uh, graduate or the master's. So there are plenty of opportunities. So for that, you need to give some examination like GATE or something like that. And also you can stay in the academia 
just like uh, doing as a, a doc or as a doctorate or as a researcher or you can uh, in, a, in a longer run you will can join as a professor or a scientist or something like that so it will be easier for everyone to get a job because you can switch or it's not mandatory to stay in physics you from physics after completing your master's degree you can move into different directions you have a lot of options just like you can move into any engineering electrical field or any semiconductor industries or any simulations or any it it professions you can switch into so these are the options so you have to think uh, or during your or role uh, masters or the, your bachelors that what which directions interests you the most so then only you will uh, figure out that uh, uh, I will move into this direction or that. So that will be very much helpful for you. So next uh, that, uh, what can you do with a physics degree? So these are uh, the list that I have made on. So, so you can be a physicist or a material scientist, as you know, and also you can move into an engineering field because uh, where I'm working, so I am working on an applied uh, physics department. So my colleagues, so there are different uh, engineers also they are doing uh, the phd along with me so uh, it's not like that uh, in a physics department only you uh, physicist will work so there are some engineers also they are working on it so you have a plenty of options to move into a different uh, domain or a different field an engineering field and do your phd over there or do your research over there or you can act you can carry on your uh, act, uh, other other stops over there and also the next thing, uh, the astronomer or astrophysicist, you can, so after completing your master's, so since our department is Department of Astronomy and Physics, so it will be easier to move into this uh, astrophysicist because you have already have a previous background over uh, astrophysics and all this sort of things. And uh, also you can be a teacher like in high school, college, university, a computer programmer because you have a lot of simulation during your core core coursework and also you have a basic understanding of data structures and all this sort of thing. So you can opt for a computer programmer or as a financial uh, analyst or anything, meteorologist. So there are very plenty of options for you uh, if you choose a physics degree. So initially what I thought that uh, uh, when I joined NIT, so I thought that I can go with uh, only with the physics things and uh, uh, there is no other options. But uh, after coming over here, I can see that my, uh, my friends and my seniors are in different domains. So it is possible if you open your mind and have a good experience throughout your study. So it is possible to go into different directions. It is uh, possible at least in the NIT route club because it's a technical institute and uh, you can have a, a lot of uh, other stuff, other experiences from various technical th things that is happening over here. So it will give you an experience and it will be helpful for you in a longer run. So the next, uh, I will going to explain the tips and tricks, tricks that will help you uh, so the first thing that uh, when I come over here that uh, some of my seniors just told me that uh, it's a CGPA is a very much important thing and you need to maintain that thing. And some told that it's, it doesn't matter. Uh, the CGPA doesn't matter at all. So but uh, what I feel after completing my five years over there, so that it's uh, have a decent GPA, not you don't need to have a very uh, good uh, in GPA or very high GPA. So that's not required. It's 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 good, but it's not required. And also you don't need to be in the lower sort of uh, six or seven CGPA. So you need to have a decent GPA just like above eight. So it will be uh, it will be good for the if you want to move into the research domains or as a, if you want to have a try to for a job or in campus jobs. So it will be easier for you because so or don't consider this uh, GP as everything. So it, it can boost you, boost your CV or boost your uh, chances of uh, getting into the next round or to the interview round. But uh it will it is not at all everything so the another thing that i want to say is that uh, have a creative thinking and uh, throughout your uh, study or uh, study period so think or uh, think as much as you can because you are a physicist so for the main job of physicist to think think differently and to analyze something and to develop some new out of it so the basic motto is to is the creative thinking so if you have it so uh, it's good or if you don't have then you uh, try to have some uh, sort of these things within your mind and never fear to ask why so initially during my uh, starting years i feared to ask questions to the professors because i thought that these questions are not relevant to the study or these questions maybe are very easy because i don't uh, maybe very easy so i maybe consider it, uh, considered it as not that much good sort of questions but after some time, I just uh, figured it out that always 
uh, ask the question to the professor or to anyone. So don't fear. So don't uh, afraid of asking any questions because after asking your after asking the questions, you will feel a lot more uh, good because you you will understand the whole concepts as well as you will gain some knowledge. So never fear to ask any questions because uh, it will it will pile up a lot of things within your mind in the longer run. So it will uh, it will not help you if you are st stalking all the questions within you are not stopping you or stopping yourself for asking any sort of questions. So the next thing that uh, uh, there are two options that you can have, uh, just like you can go uh, if you are uh, after so in the research field, if you want to stay in the research field, there are two options that you have that after completing your master's. So one is uh, if you are trying for a research position in India, then you can uh, opt for GATE and uh, CSR net examinations. So you have to you have to appear for that and uh, just you know, need to clear the cutoff. So there are two options in CSR net that is uh, LS and GRF. So if you clear the LS, then you can apply for various uh, uh, lecturer position in different universities. And if you clear the GRF, then you can have a, you can work as a you know, research assistant in various department uh, departmental labs. So you will be having a some good money, some amount of money, just like thirty one or thirty five thousand. So it depends on GRF to SRF promotion. And all these sort of things. And apart from this, there is PMRF also, Prime Minister Research Fellowship in India. So it is paying you a very good amount of money for your research, and it is very prestigious. So I will recommend you to try for these things because uh, if you stay in India, then these these things will help you for uh, or developing a good because developing a good research career that you want to have. And if you want to move out from the country, so if you want to try to apply for abroad positions, then I will say that uh, 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 in my experience that you there is different timeline for applying in different universities, a different continental zone. Just like in USA, you need to apply before the December sort of things because majority of the deadlines will be before the uh, December. So you need to apply within the fourth, fourth year initials. You have to complete all your a CV, all your international exams, and everything need to be completed before this December, so that you can apply and uh, and look for the results. And in UK, so there is a little bit of funding difficulties, but there is always some chance that just like I have applied for Chancellor Fellowship, so it is uh, really difficult for uh, UK because uh, uh, the the tuition fees for non uh, non UK students are very high, so so they generally doesn't don't prefer. To opt for a non-European, a non-UK student because uh, they have from the fellowship, it will take a lot amount of money to get into. So that's a different scenario. But if you are good, then you can uh, get a different fellowship over there in UK. And in uh, in Europe, if you want to try to apply in Europe, then you you can uh, apply after December because uh, I will I will say try for US universities till December and after December. So you try for various other universities, Germany, in uh, Sweden, France, or various other universe, uh, research organizations. So that will be uh, very much helpful. So for that, you have to prepare uh, for various international exams like TOEFL and GRE. So prepare early because uh, it takes some time. So it depends. It, it's a uh, case, case to case basis. If you have a good grasp over English, then it is easier for you to TOEFL, to crack TOEFL and GRE. And if you have good analytical things, then it's easier to uh, the preparatory core time will be less. So uh, the TOEFL, you need a minimum score of 100 or something like that for TOEFL so that it will be easier to move out because move out from the country. So they, it's a basic barrier. It's not uh, everything, but it's a basic thing that is needed. And the GRE thing is mostly uh, required in some uh, US or uh, European countries. So the GRE thing is required for the uh, applying for various research organizations. So you need to prepare for it. So I, I think I uh, it's not mandatory to uh, have some coaching or something like that or take some subscriptions like that. So you can do it with your own, with have, having some sufficient amount of some uh, uh, some resources like uh, some PDFs or some uh, resources for this TOEFL and GRE. You can get it from the internet or I can help you with that if you need some resources for TOEFL GRE and if you want to study by your own because spending a lot of money for preparatory courses as well as spending a lot of money for TOEFL and GRE is because uh, you have to pay a lot of money for TOEFL because it's 15,000 and for GRE it's something like 15,000 so it's it's a lot of money so there are two GREs GRE general GRE physics so it's a uh, hell lot of money and uh, investing a lot in the preparatory courses is uh, not worth it if you are not from a well-to-do 
family or if your financial condition is not that good so prepare well for those exams in advance and try for it and i i always recommend to uh, go for go for go for some uh, fellowships because that will help you uh, uh, in a longer run because uh, a prestigious fellowship just like uh, uh, this uh, Marie Curie fellowship and there are other other fellowships like uh, uh, some fellowships of USA uh, I don't remember those things but there are a lot of fellowships so try to aim for that because uh, that uh, have a lot of a uh, good amount of uh, money for your uh, for your career and all this sort of things so you will not be in shortage of money so if you work in this us uk and uh, european countries then uh, you will be paid with a good amount of money and uh, you don't need to depend on any anybody else so you will save a lot also i will guess so after that uh, i will say that have a good research background by doing internship because to apply for this universities and all this sort of things you need uh, you need to have good sort of inter research background so these things is possible if you do some research internships in uh, india or outside india or you can do some inter if you don't find it then you can do also in your uh, in your own lab just like i have done some or uh, uh, i me with my able i have done some research at uh, cryogenics labs at, at uh, nit raurkela so these things you can these things will help you to build up uh, a good cv and a good background research background so that is very much required so don't go after marks and mugging mugging up of thing last moment mugging so that is not recommended but you can do for the exams if you are not uh, comfortable but don't go for mugging i i say and don't look after marks because if you look up so try to build your concepts and uh, so that is the main thing that is that will help you in a longer run so the marks will not help you that that will help you for a, a shorter run but the concepts and the knowledge will help you for a longer run so uh, don't so you don't require much so from my experience i will tell you that you don't require much time for the university exam so or uh, a little bit of amount of time for before the examination it will the university you can you can uh, do good in university exam so initially i thought that i need to give a lot of uh, uh, efforts for my university exam but once i passed on from my first year then i just feel that i can give a little bit amount of time to the university exam and i can spend the rest amount in doing various research and various other activities or are developing other skills that i am having so the next enjoy the extracurricular act activity so that's the main important thing because if you are moving into the uh, uh, institute for your bachelor's or masters then enjoy the extracurricular curricular activities like uh, i just do a uh, uh, play volleyball and uh, all sort of badminton for the team for the or uh, for the institute team uh, for the institute team and all this sort of things and also uh, some if you want so you can hold up some positions in various uh, uh, for, uh, for for nit and all this sort of things and this will help you in developing your personality because i think that uh, uh, getting knowledge is not uh, enough so have a, having a good personality will help you uh, for uh, excelling in your life so that's very much important so i will just give you an example just like while you are playing some games or playing some uh, volleyball so for example if you play volleyball then the thing is that you need a teamwork or team team coordinations or some leadership qualities or some dominant ca characteristics you need to show so those things will be developed from that so these things will be help you these things will help you in your research career or uh, creating a team called when you are working on a team group event or something like that so these things will really help you so enjoy the extracurricular activities and don't stress only on these things so um, that's that's my uh, uh, advice to you so apply early to various universities abroad so i have already explained this point so how to do this do those things and the main thing that i face problem is when i am looking for uh, when i am initially applying for various universities i look for the uh, supervisors good supervisors not the good university because initially i thought that this is a very big university that is a very big university in terms of times ranking or in terms of Q, uh, qs ranking so the, uh, the the ranking matters but the thing is that the group where you are going into so that matters the most so look for the group not for the, the not for the ranking because ranking comes from a lot of thing because it comes it combines all the uh, department and various other factors which is combined so it gives a combined uh, depart uh, uh, value of the university not a individual value of the department or not an individual value of the of the supervisor so you look for the supervisor so and uh, choose uh, based on that not over the also so some people prefer uh, uh, some going to a different or uh, going to a certain location or going to a certain uh, continent so those things 
need to be uh, need should not be your prime factor so the prime prime factor is the supervisor whom you are looking up into and i will explain you something about the interview experiences i felt because in different just like in uk us and uh, europe so there the tech, the interview experiences are really different so everyone expects a little bit of different thing in different uh, uh, uni uh, different uh, continent so the first thing what they try to do is they put up you in a random hypothetical situation so you will uh, basically say that they will ask you which are uh, some things which are not uh, physically possible which are violating the law of physics and then they develop a concept and they will ask you to develop a concept out of it so these type of things so they will see that how much you are able to think and uh, how much you are able to cope up with new ideas so so that's the major motive and uh, you need to be calm and uh, composed during your interview experience so don't be uh, very over excited or uh, don't be a dull kind of uh, personality during your interviews so that will help and uh, generally in uk so the interview uh, the inter in uk and europe the interview is done by the uh, uh, the supervisor and the all this sort of things but in usa uh, it's a different panel so the there is a different graduate committee so they will take the interview so after after going over to that institute for one year so you will have to choose your supervisor but in uk and europe your supervisor is already fixed when you are up, when you just get admitted but in usa so there is some uh, sort of chances that you don't have your supervisor so you have to figure out your supervisor after completing your first year so whichever uh, uh, professor you feels good or whichever domain you wants to be there so it will be easier and also the another thing is that in usa it takes generally a 5 to 6 year for completion of your phd and in uk and europe it's generally 3 to 3 4 years if you if you do really good research so these are the thing and uh, and the, i want to conclude by saying that try everything to get an idea of every research domain because uh, when you are in your uh, a bachelor's or master's degree so try to get an idea of every research domain because when you are entering from plus 2 level uh, so so you don't you you must know just uh, just for example like uh, so you want to explore the particle physics line astrophysics line condensed matter so all this sort of things so and then only you decide which research domain interests you the most and which are the things uh, you what you want to do over your or in your throughout your life and always there is some possibility that you can switch you can switch because uh, whatever topic you are choosing as your phd it is not mandatory to choose it as your postdoc so feel free always to switch the topics if you are not comfortable with it or if you find another topic very much interesting then it you it's it's uh, normal to switch topics so always have a, a understanding of various research domains and then decide your future plan just after analyzing all the all the domains because if you left some domain so in your future you will think that uh, so i can go to that thing if if it is uh, there so something like that so don't have that regret so look for every domain and all sort of things and then only decide your future plan so that's it so i hope you have understood something from it so thank you so much hello yeah uh, thank you aditya bhaiya for that wonderful insight uh, now i invite able bhaiya to share his views Thanks, ICS. Thanks, Aditya, for this wonderful opportunity. Give me a moment before I share my screen. Yeah. So, um, Pranidhya, can you pull up the put up the screen on screen share on the yeah, stream? Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, just a Yeah. Sure. Thanks. Yeah. So, thanks everyone for being here. So, as Aditya has already covered a large chunk of what are to be covered. So, I have named the slide as making the most of. the ph department uh, um which stands for the department of physics and astronomy although in the integrated msc program we get just one theory and one lab course for astronomy but still uh, that one theory and one course usually sufficient for you to switch to astronomy uh side of department if you actually want to go ahead in that because a lot of our seniors have actually went for that so that's an interesting field uh, especially if you want to go abroad so that's one possible opportunity uh, putting it out ahead before actually start the presentation so uh, starting it off um, i'll start with a few academic things so the first thing that i want to say is 
choose your professional electives wisely so i and aditya have both the same degree which is de- which is integrated msc from department of physics and astronomy but we both have not done the exact same courses uh, if i'll give one example one of the courses that i have done is quantum field theory which is a difficult course which i don't recommend at this point uh, but which aditya has not done uh, so uh, in our department and in fact the way that the nit or curriculum is structured uh, you have core curriculum you have got professional electives and then you have got open elective slash hs elective uh, so i'll speak about the professional elective part so not all the courses that you have will be core courses some of them will be professional electives and if you find that there's a particular professional elective that you find will be difficult then prefer not to take it if you think there are no options for it talk to the hod or to a faculty advisor because professional electives are not mandatory it is possible for you to change professional electives and it is helpful for a lot of people who find few subjects difficult so if you find some um, extremely deeply convoluted mathematics based subjects difficult then don't take those professional electives because doing all the professional elective is not mandatory for you to get a degree the core courses are mandatory which you cannot skip very frankly quantum mechanics quantum 1 quantum 2 our core courses there is no way to skip it uh, it's impossible but courses like quantum field theory advanced quantum mechanics there are few multiple other courses which are professional electives which you can choose wisely so that's very important that you choose wisely because it can define whether or not you actually graduate uh, from the institute because some professional electives are like really tough thank you so take it depending on your interest and depending on your capability to score grades so it's up to you whether you want to learn a subject because of interest or you want to learn a subject uh, because you just want good grades so i would leave it up to you depending on your use case so depending on where you want to move ahead the first thing to remember the second thing that i would say regarding academics is that stay in touch with your professors so uh, it's possible that uh, you're looking at previous year question papers let's say for statistical mechanics and you see that these particular types of questions came but maybe the professor has changed so nit rorkela being an autonomous institute a, a huge amount of freedom is given to the way that the subject is structured and taught to the professors who teach them so it's possible that they teach in a different way than previous years it's possible they structure the questions differently so staying in touch with the professor helps you to understand how the examination is going to be structured point a the other advantage for you uh, of staying in touch with the professors is the fact that 20 marks at the end of the day comes from a professor that's how nit rorkela's curriculum is designed there is no escape from it so 20 marks is in the hand of the professor so staying in touch with the professor helps with that as well and lastly if at all you have some doubts the professor is there to help you out so staying in touch with the professor goes a long way in this and not just that uh, staying in touch with professors helps you with recommendations if at all you need recommendations moving forward be it for professional courses be it for higher education so staying in touch with professors comes with a lot of benefits so try to leverage that the third which i would say is that cgp at the end of the day matters the i would give you a nice justification for that so the reason why i say cgp matters is because let's say uh, someone has a cgp of around 6 point something out of 10 at nit or club it's okay to have a cgp of 6 point something if you have got something to show that yes i did not focus on academics or i was not able to focus on academics but i did something else in that time so let's say you have you are an excellent uh, sports person who has won medals for the institute represented at national level and all those things you should have something in your resume or cv to show that why your cgp is less either you show you are good at academics which is what your cgp shows or there should be something substantial enough to show that why your cgp was not up to the mark or maybe your interest is not there so you developed interest somewhere else there has to be something to offset that because uh, very frankly at the end of the day cgp is one of the easiest metrics that any corporate or any higher education institute would prefer to judge a candidate and it's easier for them that way as well so there is no escape from that so uh, at the end of the day having having a good cgp will never hurt you trust me having a good cgpa will never hurt you but it's highly possible having a bad cgpa will hurt you it has never happened that a good cgpa has hurted anyone so just stay with that if possible yeah so from that i move on to placements uh, so the first thing that i want to say regarding placements is that decide beforehand whether or not you want uh, to pursue a higher education 
or you want to go for a job because uh, it's better for you better for everyone else better for the placement committee once you have decided that the first thing is to stay in touch with placecom because the the way that nid or class placement scenario is structured is that the placement committee has an integral role in deciding what all companies come to the institute uh, uh, for and they actually decide what all companies to come when and everything depending on the badge depending on a lot of factors so staying in touch with the placecom a gives you an insight of what company is going to come when uh, they would know what kind of companies you are expecting to come so it's better for you as well so that's the first thing that i would say regarding placements second is leverage off campus opportunities uh, given the immense shift in the industry and everything because of this pandemic uh, we can never expect things to go back to what it was earlier no matter how much ever we try because uh, there will be a new normal the new normal will not be same as the previous normal very frankly okay so it's possible that some of the companies that used to come earlier will not come some of the companies which never used to come will start coming to nit or orkla so you can never expect the future to be same as the previous year which is why i would highly recommend and encourage all of you to leverage if possible as much as possible off campus opportunities which are immensely available out there for almost everyone without any restrictions we know folks from an it or clade self who have done immensely good in off campus opportunities so try to leverage that third point is something which uh, which uh, sounds weird but uh, is really important which even aditya would agree to which is learn linear algebra no matter whether you want to go into the field of physics whether you want to go into the field of development no matter electronics electrical engineering no matter where you want to go linear algebra is very very important be it coding be it physics be it quantum mechanics anything just learn linear algebra well at some point in your life linear algebra will come for you and it's important to have good knowledge of linear algebra and i have just written linear algebra over there but ideally if you want to go add with even with the department of physics research based you should know the basics of coding because at this point in time simulation and development is kind of necessary you should not be the most expert developer out there but knowing the basics of coding uh, will never hurt you and at the end of the day will be advantages for you because Uh, not all the experiments that you do are directly laboratory based because a lot of the analysis will be based on code uh, and writing some simulations and for that it's advantageous to an extent to know coding but linear algebra be it development be it physics be it any field that you go will go a long way try to learn it if you want a recommendation on where to learn linear algebra you can learn it from MIT open course where professor gilbert l strang he has taught it really well so that's the nice place to start off for linear algebra uh the fourth point is build an impressive resume slash cv um controversial statement but i am not a fan of the template that is provided by the institute for placements the resume so if you are applying for off campus try to build a proper nice one page cv if possible uh, recommended is one page cv you can build a two page cv as well but try to build a nice resume which because at the end of the day assume this there are multiple people applying for a job and you have to stand out and the first step for almost every other job for off campus is resume or cv shortlisting for on campus jobs there is nowadays uh, in this virtual setup we have resume shortlisting but earlier we used to have near zero resume shortlisting process we used to have online test and then interview so resume short resume goes a long way for off campus hiring so build a really good resume keep it updated put relevant information put relevant information when i say relevant i mean relevant do not put useless information on your resume because i personally had to convince my one of the interviewers uh, why i put uh, that i did a research paper publication uh, on that interview that i was giving for a software profile so do not put only relevant information do not put any irrelevant information that is going to come back hurting you uh then the fifth point is very important because at the end of the day we human beings are meant to work as a team we are human beings are meant to work together and for that you should be good at expressing yourself in forms of written content and oral content uh because at the end of the day you would be required to write emails recommendation letters uh, uh 
uh, SOPs, which stands for Statement of Purposes. Uh, so you need to show that you are interested in a particular position, be it research, be it Department of Computer Science, be it any field that you're going to apply for. So you should be good at expressing yourself. If you feel that you need assistance in that, I would recommend you to join clubs which aid you in that. So some of the literary clubs we have in the university, try to take advantage of that because you should be able to express yourself really well in written and oral communication. Given the virtual setup, it becomes even more important because uh, it's possible that your video is off. So the only way for the other person to understand you is through either written communication or through oral communication. So try to develop that. It goes company that you join uh, is is not necessarily going to be the only company that you ever work for. Uh, so even if it's not the dream company that you wanted for, just go forward with it because it's possible that your dream company probably is not coming to the institute or probably some unforeseen circumstances happen, your dream company is not hiring. So do not keep yourself waiting for too long. <coughs> it's okay to wait for a bit to skip off a few companies, but if you find the role interesting enough, if you find a position interesting enough, go forward with it. Because very frankly, uh, almost none of you will have experience of corporate unless actually you start working. Because it's possible that what you have dreamt about a company is very different from what the actual work life actually is. So get into the corporate life, get into how the actual work actually happens, and then you would be able to judge it better. Because Sitting in university, it's really difficult to imagine what uh, working in the office would seem like. So that's something that I would suggest all of you. It has been the same for almost even for you when you joined the university as well, because it's possible that what you thought about the Department of Physics and what it actually is are very different. So many times our imaginations are not perfect. So hence, do not keep yourself waiting for too long. And coming to the next slide, which is clubs and extracurricular, as Aditya all, already mentioned, this is where the fun happens. I'll just briefly mention a few points. Joining a club isn't mandatory, uh, if you are asking me that question. It's not mandatory. Uh, if you ask my recommendation, I would recommend you to join uh, because if you don't enjoy, if you don't explore these activities in college, you would rarely find time after graduating, unless, of course, you go for a PhD or master's once again. Once you're into a work life, it's difficult to find time for this experimental stuff that you want to do in your life. Yeah. Uh, while choosing a, a club or a sports team or organization, anything, try to choose something which is going to mutually benefit you. So if you're in a literary society club, tech society club, any club or any society, Try to see uh, places from which you can learn and build yourself up as well. Because you do not want to be in a place where you are part of a club or an organization where you are not learning anything. Because this club and extracurricular is meant for fun and also, very frankly, meant to benefit you and to improve you and to make you a better person. And which is why it's really important that you choose those club, organization, sports team, whatever it is based on your interest and if you're able to benefit yourself. And with that, that's pretty much about what I had to cover. We need to go to the questions. Uh, before that, um, you can reach out to me on almost any platform. That's my username on almost any platform. If you don't find the username on that platform, probably I don't exist over there. So you can DM me on some other platform. So that's pretty much about me. And I would hand it over to ICS for the remaining parts. Uh, thank you, seniors, for that uh, wonderful session. Now we'll uh, move on to the Q&A part of the session. So the first question that we have is, what are the currently hot research domains for a physics student? So uh, uh, you like to answer yes. this? Yes. So it depends upon to whom you are asking this question because uh, there are different domains within physics that is uh, particle physics, condensed matter physics, astrophysics. So I will give you an explanation regarding how what are the fields that is uh, on a hot research domain on condensed matter physics or something like that. 
So just for example, nano science and nano technology is very much required because in uh, in day to day life, you, it is very much required to uh, to squeeze the size and everything. So the nano science and nano technology is very much important, and uh, the quant the and getting all this uh, research out of it by doing some simulations and doing the experiments. So it will be very much helpful if you have a simulation experience and. Uh, and uh, experimental experience. So just like nanoscience in, and technology, there are other things that just like quantum info information science and all these sort of things. It will be very much, uh, it is very much uh, uh, necessary in the in, in our today's era. And also I want to explain you that, uh, for example, just I'm giving you an explanation that what are the things just uh, uh, if, uh, as, just for an example, I am working on thermoelectrics. So basically what our job is to convert the heat to the electricity. So gen, uh, previously, uh, we are using solar cells or other sort of things just like for to, so, to convert the solar radiation to electricity. So there are some existing research. So always try to find that research topic which has some future impact. Just like uh, we are not in an era of thermoelectrics because we don't use thermoelectrics much in our today's life. But we have to predict that this will come in the next 20 to 30 years. So the field of thermoelectrics or something like that will be, uh, will be a, a budding physics a budding research topic so you have to choose some things which have a, a future impact not on an existing research i will i will not say that uh, it's not easier to uh, manipulate uh, something in an existing research but it is easier to uh, to focus on a new research topic which has some future impact which are which has not been uh, touched till now so that will be my recommendation. So it de it's depends on also there are other fields like astrophysics, so or particle physics. So there are, there are a lot of opportunities and all this sort of things. So that's it. I hope you understand. Uh, thank you for that insight, Bhaiya. Now there's a, another question. Uh, how taxing is PH academic in NITR? How much co-curriculars can uh, I take without getting overwhelmed? I'd like both of you to give an insight according to you. Yeah, so adding on to that, uh, so my experience and even Aditya's experience is not going to the same as your experience because we were the last batch of the old curriculum and from the present batch, that's in the final year and everyone who took admission from 2017 onwards, you everyone is part of the new curriculum or that's what the present curriculum is. So the credits and the free times and labs all of it have changed a lot. Uh, but one thing that I would like to add on over there is that the change that has happened is a reduction of credits. And we uh, being in the university have been able to be part of multiple clubs and do research, uh, being able to manage seamlessly all of that, that has been possible. So it's possible very frankly because at the end of the day there it isn't very much taxing for exams you can study two to one week study is more than enough apart from that you have got weekends you have got classes end at five o'clock uh, even on a normal day sometimes 6 15 and then you would have a lot of free time in our time we had our entire final year free to a large extent because uh, we did not have any lab courses but that academic structure has changed now but even then uh, you would always find yourself have time. And uh, if you want uh, your entire batch to have a really good free time, what we always used to do is talk to the professors and reschedule our timetable to make sure that our free times are adjusted properly. So that's something which you all can explore, talk to your professor and readjust the class schedules. Oh, OK, thank you, Bia. Aditya, Bia, would you like to add to this question? So Abel has pretty more explained everything. So we will move into the next question. Better. OK. So yeah, the next question is, uh, what are the future prospects for people who do coding? It will be, I think, this question is for so, you. So yeah, so answering that, the first thing that I want to say before answering the question is the fact that uh, just because you want to delve into the aspect of coding or you want, or let's say you want to stay in the department of physics but you want to do coding as well so it's not that the two have to go separately because at this point in time uh, research fields like quantum computing is at the edge of physics and computer science so the future stands where physics and computer science merges even things like what Aditya mentioned about uh, nanoscience and technology a lot of the semiconductor industry the way that our chipsets work a lot of is is 
deeply integrated with what you do with semiconductors and what you do with computer science. So it's possible that both can go hand in hand together. The first thing coming to coding at this at this stage, I firmly believe that computer science or coding is not a department, but it has become a language, very frankly, just the way German or French is a language. It's, it has at this point become uh, a form of, sec of expressing what you want to do and knowing what the language can do is, is going to be advantageous for you. Because if someone, even if they want to go into the field of physics or chemistry or maths, anything, uh, being able to code uh, is going to give an upper edge because simulation and coding is what is going to take us future because you don't want to do the same repetitive experiments over and over again. Uh, coming to coding, um, coding is not just restricted to uh, developing software. There are multiple domains that you can explore, be it from physics, be it mechanical. Using code, you can work in almost any field that you actually want to. So the prospects are not limited. It is limited by your imagination, as simple as that. Okay, so I want to add another thing is that uh, uh, just like I have done a research in physics throughout my uh, five years, so I have done some coding or some some sort related to that. But when I just move on as a PhD, as a early stage researcher at Heidelberg University, I'm uh, I'm doing I'm modeling the uh, experimental stops into uh, various codes. So our, my seniors and all those uh, all those who are working in this field, they are all in the IT and the computational of uh, companies in German and in USA. So you can you can see that uh, if you are also in a in a research field in the coding coding sector or something like that or in the on the joint sector of experimental and coding, so you can also land into various various uh, coding companies or various IT companies over in few, uh, in USA or Europe. So you will have an options to switch. So whenever you want, you can uh, you can stay in the academia also, and you can you also have a chance to go into uh, uh, to the IT companies after PhD also or something like that. So it will be helpful. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that question. The next question is: What are the higher education prospects in India? And there's also one more question, which like uh, which goes out: What should be the journey of a research aspirant after getting into the department? What steps should we take to go abroad for higher studies? So, so uh, I, I will try to explain this uh, thing. So, what are the higher education prospects in India? Is that uh, you can do, you can work as a PhD, or you can uh, work as a lab, lab as lab technician, or other sort of things. So, for that, uh, if you want to move into a theoretical, good theoretical institutes, then the RRI institutes and various uh, ICTS and TIFR. These are various institutes which are very much good in theoretical science. And if you want to do some pure, uh, good experimental stops, then there are uh, our institutes like ISC and various other institutes. So just try for the, because it's man, it's important to get a fellowship. So try for either CSIR or NETGATE or PMRA for something like that. So it will be easier for you for if you want to, after completing your PhD, if you want to do postdocs or if you want to uh, do some jobs just like as a professor or something like that, or as a lecturer or, as a research industry, India is not that much developed because from it is not uh, that India is not that uh, much ahead because uh, people are not uh, 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 there is no much research industry which is taking physicists as an uh, as a as an employee. So I will the limited options are there, but not that much as compared to that of USA and Europe. So you can have those things, uh, those prospects like uh, uh, industries and all these sort of things in Europe and in USA. So uh, continuing that question. So what are the steps uh, we take to go for a, a, abroad, go abroad for higher studies? So you, the basic thing is that you, I have explained that you need to clear the TOEFL and GRE. So these are the entry barriers that is needed to go into uh, abroad uh, system or the US system or to European system. So uh, prepare well for those exams and build up your SOP, have a good research background. So these things are very much required uh, for moving into uh, for higher studies or to go abroad for different uh, 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 research positions, not for studies or for different, you can go up for different research position. So, so the NITR curriculum, NIT article curriculum is pretty much uh, in, inconsistent with all these things because you are getting a lot of variety of studies including the technical stops because when you are applying for research or uh, position in uh, at, uh, abroad so they also uh, need some technical they also need some uh, need you from some technical or uh, stops which is very much uh, there in our curriculum 
in an IT route class. So it's it's a good option for you. So thank you. Okay, we have one last question here. Uh, when would be a suitable time to start coding after joining the institute? Is starting in second year uh, too late? Okay, so the best time to start is always today. Uh, now answering when is the right time to start, I would tell you if you're actually interested in the field, be it coding, be it writing something, be it uh, working on research project, uh, Start it as soon as possible because what's the point of delaying it? And do not be in regret that you started too late because there will always be opportunity for you to level up or to learn something e even on the day that you start. Uh, so I and Aditya, everyone, uh, we actually did, if I'm not wrong, our research project at you know at our United Rockley itself in second year. So I mean, we thought it's a nice thing to do in the summers and we did it which actually helped a lot in uh, the admission and the interview process of Aditya as well. So it's never too late. You can actually start at any point that you actually want to if you're interested in a particular field. So try it out, then decide whether you want to continue with that or not. And answering a question, is it too late? No, it's not too late. The right time to start is right now. OK, uh, thank you for that answer, Bia. It seems like uh, we have run out of questions for the session. And thank you. Uh, thank you both of the seniors for making this session possible amongst your busy schedule and giving such an insightful session to the juniors. We hope that our participants have gained a knowledge from your valuable insights and experience. And a very thank you for the juniors uh, to join with us. The video on this uh, for this session will be available on YouTube channel for viewing later. You can also share it with your friends who couldn't make it for, to the session for any reason. You can also follow us on our social handles. The LinkedIn profiles of the speakers are also provided in the description of the video. Please free, feel, feel free to reach out to them in any case or in any queries. Thank you all for joining. Thank you. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you, ICS, for this wonderful experience.